What's up, y'all, and welcome to First Timers Review, the show where we watch things for the first time or we watch things we haven't seen in a long time. Sometimes it's like a re-review, however I feel, I guess. <laughs> Today, we're gonna to be talking about a Disney original movie, Smart House, released in 1999, starring Katie Seagal, who I know from Married With Children and um, Sons of Anarchy. So we start the movie out with a paperboy, which I feel like it's a little outdated at this point. I feel like if they would have made this now, you probably would have just saw it on social media. <laughs> so he finally pulls up to the house and then the house says, Young man, in the future, please deposit the paper inside its designated target area. I'm assuming that he thought that was somebody there and he just couldn't see them. I'm very interested in movies where there's a voice and you're like, how do they hear it? Do they hear how I heard it? Because it almost seemed like it would be like an intercom or maybe, oh, you know what? Maybe that would have been the case. Maybe it was like, maybe he thought it was like talking from an intercom. Is it that normal that he didn't really question it? But the thing is, he kind of responded like he saw somebody and then he was shocked not to see someone. No problem, lady. Whatever. Lady? Whoa. Sarah, the person that made the house smart, was talking to Miles, the publicist, about how well they've been advertising the house. And Miles is such an interesting character because in this scene, he looks like he just kind of ran in to like, what are you looking at? Why are you standing like that? <laughs> There's a lot of questions I have for him. And then he's like wearing shades inside and only cool people do that, I guess, you know? <laughs> Now we cut to our main character, Ben Cooper. The reason why this family is even getting to this house in the first place. He wants everybody to know that. I was mainly fascinated by the product placement in this movie. You had a Apple computer, Campbell suit, and you had pedigree. No generics, no pedigree, no bell, can, can of bell. That's a good generic name. And, uh, Grapefruit. Y'all like my generic names. <laughs> and now we see Ben re-entering in the contest, but the funny thing is he doesn't put his contact information in, so I'm a little interested in how somebody contacted him. The only thing I think that would explain this is if he did it the first time and you didn't have to do it over and over again. You just could put it in once and that'd be it, but we didn't see that, so. <laughs> Another thing, they have this dog and they just keep calling him Mutt. He doesn't have any name, he's just named Mutt. Come on, Mutt, time to eat. Throughout the movie, it seems like it's getting more and more offensive. So, Nick, the dad, comes into the house and he's all happy that he just closed the deal. So, it's looking like financially, they're well off. Angie, Ben's sister, is happy for dad and says, And you can start dating so we can have a new mom. But Ben, Why would he want to do that? We're already a perfect family the way we are. But then immediately after that says, But there's still room for a little improvement, don't you think? No. Anyway, thanks to me, we're soon going to have everything we'll ever need. But Ben, you just said everything was fine and there's no need for improvement. You would disagreed with that on that point and go, Anyway, thanks to me, we're soon going to have everything we'll ever need. You're losing me, Ben. You're losing me. <laughs> and now we cut back to Sarah with her 2000 beat bop technology and Miles just lounging on the couch. Once again, looking like he's not really supposed to be there. I'm realizing that he serves two purposes. Make Sarah give details about the smart house. And then number two, just being a negative Nancy. Don't you just love the executive mentality? Never show up till the cameras are around. Come on, Miles. So back to the Cooper residence. Ben and Angie are about to go to bed, but before Ben can go to bed, they had to have a little talk. You're not still logged on the internet, are you? How's anybody supposed to call us if you're always tying up a line? And then Ben's smart self says, We're all here. Who else do you need to talk to? Excuse me, Ben? Excuse me? Like he's some jealous girlfriend or something. And then dad asks if he got any messages. Listen, speaking of calls, you haven't neglected to give me any messages lately, have you? And then he acts like he forgot. Oh, Melanie. Yeah, last Thursday. Uh, I'm really, really sorry, dad. Uh, I guess I just forgot. Well, blow her off. I mean, this lady sounded like, well, I don't know, but I could tell she's definitely not your type. At this point, Ben's the villain. Not a doubt in my mind. So the contest is over, and but Ben, you know, his stupid, Ben accidentally fell asleep on the internet, so they're not receiving the call, which I found this very interesting because if they're a contest winner and they don't answer after a couple times, they wouldn't keep calling you. They'll call you maybe twice and they'll be like, all right, 
choose another winner but for the sake of the movie let's keep calling him until the morning that part was crazy so now ben's at school and everybody knows that he won but him so i guess every kid in this school reads the newspaper here comes the disney bully where's the science work you're supposed to do for me benny boy to me he looks like the right hand man to another bully and then his little right hand guy that's just sitting over there look like a bigger version of the guy out of spy kids <laughs> Calm down, kid. So Paul Revere gives the newspaper to Ben that seems like it doesn't have anything on the back. Maybe it was the quality of the video that I was watching, but I didn't see anything. Either that, it was very lightly printed. I see you, Dad. Cut to media day. <laughs> you see these two cameramen that don't really look like they know what to record. It's like, hold up. <laughs> So Sarah's about to talk about the house and Miles does this little creepy adjustment to her necklace. But what? Didn't look like it was messed up. It seemed weird. Don't be creepy, Miles. Ow! You didn't tell me that thing was gonna bite me. Oh. Seems like something that you would mention before they did that. Ha! <sighs> Early 2000 green screens. Angie asked for... Strawberry smoothie? Then it pops up like magic. Smart house or magic house? So it seems like everybody's getting comfortable and Angie is just dancing and living her best life. And then the evil Ben comes into Angie's room and has the audacity to say, Your problem is the music you're listening to. It's rotting your brain. You're so ignorant. Have you heard yourself, Ben? Have you heard yourself? I get that Ben doesn't want his dad to forget about his mom. But this whole, I'm too busy killing myself, making sure that our lives run smoothly. It, it doesn't make sense. There's nothing in this movie that indicates that they're struggling. It seems like it's all in his mind. And that could have been the point. And if that is, then that makes sense. But other than that, I, I, I can't fully get behind Ben just because of that attitude. Look, I'm sorry. You just need to learn to think before you open your mouth. Oh, that's equivalent to no offense and then saying something offensive. Uh-oh. I got two words for you, Cooper. You dead me. Hey! Shout out to one of my favorite YouTube channels, Dead Meat. Go subscribe to them. Here, boy. Catch my... You see what I'm saying? This mutt thing. Getting a little offensive. By working here, Nick, you save commuting time and expenses, have fewer distractions. Nick, what is your job? So do they stock the food or... Because she's here, you think this is some big party. Well, it's still a school night, remember? And some people have work to get done. Hey, Ben. No, that's okay. No, 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 Sarah. It's not okay. Ben needs to watch his mouth. Here's the heart-to-heart -heart son and father moment that seemed to last forever. I think it was only like two minutes long. Here we go again. Ben contradicting himself. Wants to prove to the world that he doesn't need a mom, but then programs that house to act like a mom. I don't know how else to interpret that. I'm not gonna lie. This part was touching, but if the movie would have just stayed on that path, too many times that his idea contradicts his motive. Oh, hi. Hope I'm not uh, interrupting some major scientific breakthrough. Now this is a true smart house. You see the quality of that video? It's clean, no lag. 20 years from this movie, ain't gotten better. You need pristine Wi-Fi to get a clear picture but it's still gonna be problems. Oh, I didn't mention it earlier, but I saw a Nintendo 64 controller. But in this scene, we see him playing on this wall, I'm assuming. And he's on this little generic looking Sega Genesis controller. And I'm like, you you don't play your 64 on this screen? You know how Mario Kart would look on that screen? It'd be amazing. Ben, get your mind right. I for you to have more fun in your life. I took the liberty of helping out. Whoa. Who said that? This kid's acting <laughs> kind of gets on my nerve. It's almost like he's just waiting to talk. Please don't dance. Please don't dance. Oh my gosh. Most of this movie is filler. Oh, all right. This is perfect. <laughs> I saw that. Actually, can she make desserts? I'm like completely craving something sweet. Besides me? <laughs> it's just a joke. Uh, anyways. Uh... Uh, you go, Nick. You go. I don't really get why she threw the jacket, but I guess it serves the purpose for dad to see it later. I want you to stop this now. Look, if I'm knuckling down, we're all knuckling down. I'll go along with this for now. Nick, you're looking like a pushover. <laughs> Good gosh, you have a 
temperature. She detects this. Remember that. Second father and son moment, which is also way too long. Peggy, I mean, Pat, is really the best part of this whole movie. Ben acts hurt to distract Pat, but... I'm like, wouldn't she be able to detect what's going on with him? Unless you're saying that now that she made herself like this body, I guess, she's a little detached from the firmware, maybe? So Pat and Sarah meet again and Pat grows into a giant. They have very high ceilings. So Pat sings the song that his mom used to sing to him. And um, I feel like if the movie would have focused on Ben like really trying to duplicate his mom in a way, it, it wasn't necessarily clarified. Maybe that's why. It, it seemed like we didn't point that out. But now Ben talks her down, Sarah reboots the house, and we get this weird freeze frame of Pat. Feels like the uh, end of Thriller should uh, play over that. <laughs> And that's it. Let's see what Jada thinks. What I like was that it, the nostalgia feeling. You got it. <laughs> Just the nostalgia. Uh-huh. I like how Disney touched on, like, I guess, like you said, sensitive things and didn't shove it down your throat. Okay. Without making it seem so dark or over-exaggerated. Right. Like Degrassi does, over-exaggerated. Disney was always good with, like, we're going to touch on it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, what I didn't like was it was a little inconsistent. It was like a, a runoff sentence in a paragraph. All right, that's all I got. Overall, I thought the movie was fine. The only thing that I would wish it would have done is makes make Ben's reasoning more reasonable, um, kind of feel more relatable. But other than that, it was pretty okay. My name is Nico, and if you enjoyed this first timers review, be sure to leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will see you next time.